Hi everyone. In this series of videos we're looking at how to use the Fusion Builder elements. Today we'll be looking at how to use the Portfolio element. Let's begin. The Portfolio element, like the Blog and FAQ elements, is an element that allows you to display the corresponding custom post type in many ways. Let's look at the Agency demo, which has some very nice portfolio items on display. We can see the portfolio element on both the home page and the work page. They are set up identically on both, with the exception of the number of posts they are displaying. On the home page it's 6, and on the work page there are 12. Let's edit the element on the work page, and see the options for presenting your portfolio posts with this element. The first thing we can see is that there are three layouts possible, a carousel, a grid, and a masonry layout. This instance of the element is using the grid layout. If I just select the others, we can quickly see what they look like with these element option settings. Here's the carousel, and here's the masonry layout. You need to choose your layout first as some of the other option choices will depend on your layout. The picture size is the next option. This is set to auto here which uses the image's size and aspect ratio and so for a grid works best with images that have the same aspect ratio and size. The fixed setting crops all images to the same aspect ratio regardless of their native ratio, but also uses a fixed size, which in this case is too small for this particular layout. Text layout is the next option, and here it is set to no text. The other options are boxed, which looks like this and adds four options to the element for controlling the text grid, and unboxed, which adds one option for the grid box color, but doesn't work too well in a situation like this where column spacing has been set to zero. I'll just set it back to no text. The next option controls the number of columns. Here it is set to three, but you can have anywhere from one to six. Column spacing is the next option, and here it is set to zero for that checkerboard look. Equal heights is next and set to no, but in this case it's not necessary anyway, as all the featured images are the same aspect ratio. The posts per page option comes after this, and here you can set a specific number from 1 to 25, or you can enter minus 1 to show all posts. This instance is set to 12, but that's all the portfolio posts anyway, so minus 1 would work equally as well here. After this comes three options that only show when using the portfolio text layouts, like boxed and unboxed. I'll just change to box quickly so we can see them. The first one is portfolio title, which controls what is shown when using these layouts. You can choose from titles and categories, only title, only categories, and none. The next one, portfolio text alignment, is straightforward enough, and offers you left, right, and center alignments for both the title and the text. The portfolio text layout padding option is only available for the boxed mode, and this allows you to apply padding on all four sides of the content. I'll just set the text layout back to no text and we can move on. Show filters is the next option, and here you have three choices. To hide the filters, as is the case here, to show the category filters, or to show them with an all category thrown in. If I select yes here, they are added to the top of the page. But again, without any column padding, it doesn't look so great, and this layout doesn't really need it. The next few options are also related to the categories, with the pull post by option giving you the choice to pull the posts by category or tag. Changing it won't make any visual difference to this page, but it does change the next two options which allow us to select or exclude certain categories or tags if we prefer. This instance of the portfolio element has left both of these options blank, which means we are seeing all categories on the page here. Pagination is set to default here, but it doesn't really matter what the default is in this case anyway, as we are seeing all the portfolio posts on this one page, so there is nothing to paginate. The hide URL parameter is turned off here, which removes portfolio category parameters in single post URLs, but again, this is not relevant to this page. The next option is post offset, which can be used to skip a number of posts, and the last two unique options for this element are to do with ordering. The order by option allows us to order the portfolio posts in any one of seven ways, and the order option allows us to set these orders in ascending or descending order. This example is ordering the posts by date with a descending order. The last few options are the element visibility option, 
which allows you to show or hide this element on various screen sizes, and the CSS class and CSS ID options for further customization with custom CSS. There is an Extras tab for this element as well, which allows you to set any one of seven loading animations for the element. Please see the links below the video for more information on the animation options. In much the same way as the blog element displays your blog posts, this useful element allows you to present your portfolio items in a large variety of ways. Please see the link documents and videos below the video for a complete rundown on this powerful custom post type and how you can create compelling portfolio items like the one on this demo. OK, this concludes our video on how to use the portfolio element. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos, and if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.